Hey, it's Jared. If you're struggling with keeping a charge on your iPad like I am, then this video is gonna be super helpful. You see, every time I go to grab my iPad, the battery is dead or close to dead, and it's frustrating. You know, our phones, I'm used to charging that every single night, but the iPad I don't use consistently throughout the day, so I would hope that it would have at least a couple of days of battery life, and I could put it on the charger from time to time. Especially with my iPad mini, the thing is always close to dead. For example, right now it's at 23% and I charged it yesterday and my iPad Pro is at 81%. I did charge it last night and so using it just a little bit today it's down to 81% and if I just left my iPads to be for a day or two they would be dead and not ready to use the next time that I needed them. So there are some things that we could do to get a little bit more battery life out of our iPads. And so we're gonna talk about some of those things. First of all, it's likely the apps that you have running on your iPad. Maybe some of them are running in the background and using a bit of your battery and they can be resource intensive. And so the first thing that you'll wanna do is just go into your settings. We'll tap on battery and it's gonna show us our overall battery usage and it's gonna show us the apps that are contributing to our battery usage. Now on my iPad, it's gonna show me more data because I've been using this iPad a bit more and obviously the battery has been drained a bit by some apps. And so if we look at the apps that have been running, we've got 42% used on YouTube and Duolingo 23%. Those are apps that I used last night. It used up quite a bit of the battery. And then there are some other apps in here that are using a little bit of battery as well, such as Spark for email, it's using 6%. And that means that it's checking email in the background and keeping my email app up to date, even though I'm not using the iPad and it's using some battery because of that. It's also gonna give me an estimate of how much longer I can use my device before the battery goes dead. So the first step is understanding the culprits and it's likely the apps that you have running. So take a look at the apps that you have on your device and see which are using a bunch of energy. For example, Zwift has used 98% of the used portion of the battery so far today. And that was from a workout this morning. And then podcast used 1%. I haven't used the podcast app on this device for a while. And so you can see there are apps that might be running in the background that are using some energy, even though you don't use them. So if I'm not using certain apps, why are they using a bit of energy? Well, for example, the podcast app, even though I'm not using it, is keeping my podcast up to date. You can see one minute in the background, it probably went and checked for new podcast episodes, perhaps downloaded them. And so it used a little bit of battery power in the background. And you can see there are other apps that have done things like that as well. So just kind of tapping on the app names here shows you the activity that led to the battery usage. Now, if I wanna limit certain apps from running in the background, I can tap on apps from my settings and look at specific apps. And so let's look at all trails, for example. You can see that all trails has live activities, background app refresh and cellular data enabled. And so if I identified that this app was using a significant battery in the background, even when the iPad screen was off and I didn't want that, I could turn off background app refresh for that specific app. Now, most of the time, you could just simply swipe up from the bottom, see what apps you've left opened and swipe up and close out those apps. And they're probably not gonna do much in the background. A lot of times we'll turn off our iPad screen and an app is still running or doing something in the background and it ends up using some battery life. So I make it a good practice, especially on my iPads to scroll up and swipe away and close whatever apps are running in the background so that I have the best chance of them not using any battery power when I have the screen off. Now, another culprit could be your display settings. So let's go back into settings and scroll down to display and brightness. Now you can see that I have auto lock set to 10 minutes. And so if I left my screen on and forgot to turn my screen off, within 10 minutes, the screen would go off and the iPad would lock itself. I could change that to a shorter period of time. If I'm finding that I forget to turn the screen off or I end up walking away from my iPad quite often without turning the screen off, having a long period of time before the screen auto locks and turns itself off could be leading to a lot of battery usage. 
Now also the brightness value that you have set to your display could be using a lot of battery power as well. You can get access to it from the settings here, of course, or we can swipe down from the top right hand corner and we can adjust our brightness using the brightness slider here. And if you have True Tone enabled, then it's gonna change the color profile as well as the brightness of your display as it sees a need to. So if you are in a dimmer room, it's gonna lower the brightness so that it doesn't overpower you and kind of blow out your eyes. But if you're outside or in a very bright environment, it's gonna increase the brightness as well so that you can see more clearly on the screen of your iPad. And so those things could be using a bit of power. I don't think that they're the culprits, but it's definitely something that you can check, especially if it's showing up on your battery screen and it's showing display as being something that is using a lot of battery power. Now your network connectivity could also be using a bit of battery. For example, all of my iPads are the cellular variant. And so if I'm away from my home or office where I don't have a Wi-Fi connection, then the connection is over the cell network. And that's gonna use more battery power than if I'm connected to Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi is uh, easier on the device as far as battery usage and processing, whereas cellular is going to use a little bit more battery. So if I'm wanting to utilize my device on the go, I wanna make sure that it's charged up because I know that using cellular data is going to drain the battery a little bit faster than if I was connected to Wi-Fi. Some will say that leaving Bluetooth enabled will also drain the battery a little bit. I think that some of these services are so well optimized that it barely sips any energy. But if you do have a lot of devices that are Bluetooth connected, maybe more so than just a mouse and a keyboard, but maybe you have speakers and other things that are Bluetooth connected to your iPad and they're constantly connecting to your iPad, perhaps even if the screen is off, that could end up decreasing the battery life a little bit. And you would see that information over here, maybe under settings, and then it would show something about that or it would show the app that that Bluetooth device is connecting to, something would be showing up in your battery monitor here, cluing you into the fact that that Bluetooth connected device that's associated with a certain app might be using a lot of your battery. Sometimes in rare instances, you might have a software related issue. There might be an app that you left opened that's uh, running on your device that froze and froze at using up a certain amount of processing power of your device. That has happened before, but it's very rare that something like that happens. That's why I find it good just to close out apps when I'm done with my session on the iPad. If I know I'm not gonna be using it for the rest of the day, I will close out apps just to make sure that there are no processes running in the background. Now you also wanna make sure that your software is up to date on your iPad. Uh, from time to time, go into general and a software update to see if your iPad has a software update. Most of the time within a week or less of a new software update coming out for iPad, it's going to prompt you to install that software update. So chances are you're gonna have that software update done and not be months and months down the road where you might be using outdated software where perhaps Apple fixed a problem that was using up a bunch of extra battery. You also want to make sure that your apps are up to date as well. So if you go into the app store and tap on your icon in the top right hand corner, I always just start by swiping down first just to make sure that everything's updated. And then you can see I have 67 app updates. Now, typically these are going to update in the background. And so I don't need to manually do this, but if I find a problem, one of these apps seems to be using a lot of energy and I don't think that it should be, perhaps a software update will fix the problem. I'll go ahead and tap update all. And in the background, it's going to update all of the apps on my iPad to the latest version of those apps. I also restart my iPad from time to time because if you don't restart, then some things can't finish installing or maybe there's processes in the background that just kind of got stuck. If you're looking at your battery monitor and wondering why the device itself is using up so much energy, sometimes just simply restarting your device will do the trick. You can easily do that by swiping down from the top right hand corner, tapping and holding on the little power icon, and then swiping to power off. And then when you swipe to power off, wait a couple of minutes, and then turn your iPad back on by holding down the lock button for a couple of seconds until you see the Apple logo pop up on the display. And sometimes a restart is all that it needs. I know that many times when people ask me what might be wrong with their device, I ask them, when's the last time that you turned it off and back on again? And then with that, 
tends to fix the problem nine out of 10 times. Now there might be some other factors such as temperature. If your device gets hot, then the battery life is going to be less. Also with the battery technology, if it's extremely cold, the battery is not going to last as well either. And so operating your iPad in a good temperature range is probably the best thing if you want long battery life. And so think about the time where maybe you left your iPad in the car outside during winter and it got really cold out and then you didn't have any battery life the next day. Cold temperatures are really hard on lithium batteries and lithium batteries are not going to last as long in the cold. Same for a Tesla or any other sort of car that has a lithium battery in it. Same for our phones, our tablets, or any other devices that have lithium battery technology within them. And hot as well, they don't perform well in really hot temperatures. And so if your iPad is overheating for whatever reason, maybe you've just been utilizing it heavily, or you're utilizing it in more extreme temperatures that could cause problems as well for not only how long your battery will stay charged, but also the longevity of that battery as well. So how do you extend the battery life when you know that it's gonna be a little while before you have a charge again? Well, there is a low power mode on the iPad and we can go into settings and then really easily underneath the battery tab here, we have low power mode and I can toggle it on and you see now that I have a yellow icon up here showing me that I am in low power mode and I can toggle that right back off as well. Now, if I swipe down from the right hand corner into control center, I can also add low power mode as well, making it really easy for me to switch it on and off. Let's just go ahead and tap and hold and hit add new control. I could just do a search and type in low for low power mode and then tap on that. And now it has added low power mode right here. And all I have to do is tap on that icon and low power mode is now on and I can tap on that icon to turn low power mode off. So one of the things that you can do if you want to prolong the battery life of your iPad is to set up a custom focus mode that's specific only to your iPad. And then when you are not using your iPad, it will go into that focus mode that will then put your iPad into low power mode. How do you do that? Let's swipe down and go to settings and open up settings and we'll swipe down to focus and you're gonna to need to turn off share across devices in order for this to work. Now, there's a couple different ways to set this up. You can really set up an elaborate automation that will automate the process, but I found it easier and more consistent just to set it up as a focus mode. So I'm gonna turn off the shared across all of the different devices because when I want this to go into low power mode, I don't also want my Apple Watch, my laptop and my iPhone to go into low power mode. So with that turned off, I'm gonna hit plus and I'm gonna choose custom. And then I'm just gonna call this battery saver mode and hit next and we'll customize this focus mode. Now, all I really need to do for this is add a focus filter and scroll down and choose low power mode turned on and hit add. And so now whenever battery saver mode focus is turned on, then I'm also going to be in low power mode. And so at any time I can swipe down, choose a focus mode and then go into battery saver mode. And with battery saver mode enabled, you can see here that I am in that focus mode. Now, how is this any different from just simply turning this on? Well, I can automate this process. So let's turn that back off by just turning off this focus mode and going back to our settings. Now underneath the battery saver focus mode that we created, I can automate this based on time so I can have it turn on or turn off at a certain time. I can also have this turn on when I arrive or leave from work or a specific location. So if I only use my iPad at the office, I can enable this to automatically turn on when I leave the office so that it's in a low power mode until I get back to the office and then it comes out of low power mode. So that's one way that you can automate this. I can assign a certain time frame that my iPad's automatically gonna go into low power mode. So for example, I could set this to go into low power mode in the evening when I know that I'm not using my iPad and then it would stay in low power mode all the way until the morning. So that way, if I forgot to plug in my iPad, I would have a chance at having longer battery because the iPad automatically went into low power mode. So there's some benefits from using a focus mode and automating that focus mode, either from right within 
the focus mode itself using a smart activation or by setting up a shortcuts automation here that has a lot more options. So for example, a shortcut automation can trigger at a specific time of day when you arrive or leave or before a commute, before you leave for something based off of calendar entries, based off of whether or not you're connected to your Wi-Fi, whether you're connected to an external display, whether or not you're connected to a charger. So there's lots of ways that you can automate that focus mode as well to come on during specific times. Because I know for me, if it comes down to remembering to turn it on, if I could remember to turn it on on my own, then I'll just remember to plug in the iPad to the charger and I'll have my iPad charging and I'll never have that problem. But it's when I forget to charge my iPad and then something's running in the background or it's utilizing a service that could have been eliminated by low power mode being on. And that's when my battery ends up running out and I have little to no or no charge left at all when I need my iPad most. And so like I said, there are lots of different ways that you can enable low power mode automatically using either the focus modes or automations or even shortcuts or a combination of both to fit your specific needs. But understanding that this is a solution to the problem of forgetting to charge your iPad and maybe forgetting to close out some apps and then having a dead iPad six, 10, 12 hours later, automating low power mode could save you. So if you wanna know more about mastering your iPad, you'll definitely wanna check out my iPad mastery course, which is linked down in the description below. This course is gonna teach you everything that you need to know to get the most out of your iPad. And I think that's super important considering these things are quite an investment. But if you found this video useful, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you back in another one soon. Take care.